one last clip of the President of the United States. Uh, thank you, but I'm sitting down. <laughs> Look at Iran. Through the power of our diplomacy, a world that was once divided about how to deal with Iran's nuclear program now stands as one. The regime is more isolated than ever before. Its leaders are faced with crippling sanctions. And as long as they shirk their responsibilities, this pressure will not relent. Tom, will you sleep better tonight having heard that? <laughs> uh, I, may, I may take a sleeping pill so I can forget it. Mm -hmm. the, this, this man has diddled with Iran to the point where, where the military people are saying, you know, even if we decide to go in and, and bomb that place, they are so dispersed so far underground, it's by no means clear that we can do it. The time when he was going through all this wonderful diplomacy he talks about was precisely the time when those things were put underground and dispersed. It's like, it's like when Hitler was arming, you know, that as Churchill said, at one point, a memorandum could have stopped Hitler. Mm. You know, because the power was so lopsidedly on the side of the Western democracies. Uh, it's like they could say, stop rearming or else. And we can't do that with, 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 with we, they diddled, they diddled with, with Iran to the point where now we don't know. Now, but there's something interesting about, to me, whereas with social policy, intellectuals tend to go for the policies mm -hmm. that give them greater power, what greater power could an intellectual seek than military power, the power to blow things up? So why, why oh, because, do they because, shrink from... Oh, oh because, because they believe that, again, uh, that their intellect is the, is, is the unique factor that is going to save us. And to say that there are a bunch of military people uh, are going to be more effective than doing all these terribly clever things that Obama is doing uh, uh, undermines their whole position. I see. All right. Final couple of questions here. I'm asking, <clears throat> I'm asking with a particular viewer in mind. Let's say that there's a young man or young woman in the position of a Tom Sowell. This is a, if somebody's viewing this who loves to get online and read the early edition of the newspapers the way you did. <laughs> and they want to go to college, and they may even dream of grad school, and they love books, and they love ideas, but they don't want to become an intellectual of the kind that you describe in Intellectuals in Society. So I've been thinking, what, are the, what is the advice that you would give them? And I think one would be insist on empiricism. Is that right? Always insist on testing theories against the facts. Oh, absolutely. But in terms of education, you have to be very careful in which uh, college you choose. And you can't go according to big names. You go according to uh, matching what you want with what the college offers. And especially, you don't want to go to a college where the professors think that uh, uh, the students are there to provide them with an audience for indoctrination. Mm. And there's one final, we're talking here about analysis and ideas and testing ideas against reality. And I can't resist the feeling that there's an implicit theme here you're pretty good at writing what you want to say, but I also sense a kind of implicit theme here, which is a question of character, almost a moral theme of if what animates the intellectuals is as fundamental as simple, vulgar human pride, mm. then kids ought to pay a lot of attention to intellectual humility. Is that so? Is that a, a virtue that can be cultivated I, I, I don't know if it can be cultivated, but uh, it's, it's hard to find, for one thing. Uh, but, I, but I think that uh, they shouldn't go someplace where there is a party line and, and where anyone who says anything different is just slapped down. And that's unfortunately the case in too many universities. Mm. So you're looking for genuine freedom of discussion. Yes. And you're looking for a willingness to test theories against the Absolutely. facts. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Last question. We have an election coming up in November. What's your sense? Good news or bad news at the, um, when we wake up after Election Day? Will the intellectuals have, been triumph have triumphed or have been swept out of Washington? Uh, I would think that the odds of their being swept out are no better than 50-50. Do you have a candidate? We, we, as we record this, the Republican primary is still grinding on. Primaries are still grinding on. Uh, there's, none of the, there's, there's none of the candidates uh, of either party that, that would cause me to dance in the streets. <laughs> All right. 
Is there anything as you look at the current prospect for this country and the Western world that would cause you to dance in the streets? If I thought that the voters had some sense of realism and that they were concerned with the, with the larger questions rather than whose ex-wife said what and so on, or, or, or you know, what, what, what uh, Governor Romney did or did not do when he was head of Bain Capital, uh, that I would have, if, if they had some sense of the loss of freedom, which is infinitely more important than any of the specific issues that, uh, by themselves, that is, Obamacare really is a huge step towards the loss of freedom. I mean, and it happens in small ways, that, 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 but constantly. I mean, we can't have our own, the light bulb that we want in our own home. We can't flush the toilet with the kind of toilet we want. We can't take a shower with the kind of shower head we want. Uh, we can't put our garbage out except uh, uh, and, and broken down by the way that some little uh, uh, gal lighters have decided that oh, we, ought, we, ought, we, ought, we ought to do it. I mean, that, that it, it's, it's just the accretion of these things, uh, many of which are too small to be significant in, in themselves. But in the aggregate you, can, aggregate, you can see the tendency of this. The people who think they know better and they ought to be telling us what to do, uh, those people are the danger. And if you don't see that, then uh, I'm not sure what the, what the future is going to be like. The reason so many people misunderstand so many issues is not that these issues are so complex, but that people do not want a factual or analytical explanation that leaves them emotionally unsatisfied. They want villains to hate and heroes to cheer, and they don't want explanations that fail to give them that. This will be funny if not for the fact that we're actually witnessing it right now. That means people are going out for the sole reason that orange man bad. It doesn't matter that the last four years they have been borderline eating stones. Well, did you miss the part where orange man is bad? That is your whole focus. That is your whole ideology. And this is quite terrifying when you stop and really think about it. But you let me know what you think about this in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell if you're new to the channel. Thank you for watching and on to the next one. Stay free.